Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover identifying equal parts, which is an important part of working with and understanding fractions. Remember, a fraction represents part of a whole. So when working with fractions, we have a whole divided into parts, and the parts need to be equal. The parts need to be the same size. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one and see what this means and looks like. For number one, we are looking at halves. That means we want two equal parts. Let's say that we want to split a chocolate chip cookie in half. Let's look at cookie A, so this cookie right here. Do we have halves, so two equal parts? No, the right part is bigger than the left part. This would not be a fair split if we were sharing this cookie. This is not a representation of halves, two equal parts. So no, we do not have halves here. How about cookie B, so this cookie right here? Do we have halves, two equal parts? Yes, we do have halves here. This would be a fair split. Each part here is one half of the whole cookie, and those two halves make the whole. So keep in mind, when working with fractions, we need equal parts, so parts that are the same size. Let's move on to number two, where we are going to look at fourths. So fourths means we have four equal parts. Let's start with A. So do we have fourths here? Four equal parts, four parts that are the same size. Yes, we do have fourths here. All four parts are equal. Now each part is one fourth of the whole. So this is one fourth of the whole, this is one fourth of the whole, this is one fourth, and this is one fourth. And all four of those one fourths make up the whole. Moving down to B, do we have fourths here? So four equal parts. Yes, and again, each part is going to be one fourth of the whole. So again, yes, we have fourths for B. Moving on to C, do we have fourths here? No, we do not. These parts are not equal. They are not the same size. So we do not have fourths. Since the parts are not equal, each part is not one fourth of the whole. So again, we do not have fourths here. Lastly, for number two, let's move on to D. So do we have fourths here? Yes, each part is equal. Each part is the same size. So yes, each of those four equal parts is one fourth of the whole. So again, yes, we have fourths here. Let's move on to some more examples. Taking a look at number three, we're going to continue identifying equal parts. But instead of yes or no, like numbers one and two, we're going to mark each example as having equal parts or unequal parts. Equal parts are the same size, unequal parts are not the same size. Let's start with A. Is the whole divided into equal parts or unequal parts? Well, that circle is divided into unequal parts. Although we have four parts here, these are not fourths because they are unequal. They're not the same size. Moving on to B, do we have equal or unequal parts? Well, we have three equal parts here. So these are equal. This is what we call thirds. Each part is one third of the whole. So this is one third of the whole, this is one third of the whole, and this is one third of the whole. And if we take all three of those one thirds, that gives us the whole. Moving on to C, do we have equal or unequal parts here? Well, these are unequal parts. They're not the same size. Let's move on to number four, where we need to write the number of equal parts each whole is divided into. Let's start with A. We have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. 
So six equal parts. This is what we call sixths. So each equal part is one sixth of the whole. Moving on to B, we have a triangle divided into one, two equal parts. So we have halves here. Each part is one half of the whole. Lastly, for C, we have one, two, three, four, five equal parts. So fifths. Each part is one fifth of the whole. So there you have it. There's how to identify equal parts when it comes to fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.